Specialized put itself in a bit of an awkward position last year with the launch of its new Crux. Its cyclocross come gravel bike featured the same tire clearance as the Diverge, it was lighter and a bit faster too. So it was only a matter of time until its proper gravel bike, the Diverge, got an update. And it is quite a big one. Yep, Specialized has gone full gravel with this new bike, and it is certainly one that is going to divide opinion. At the back end, there is a new Future Shock rear. It provides 30 millimeters of tunable travel, hydraulic damping, and it is adjustable on the fly. Future Shock 2.0 is still at the front end, there's no real changes with the geometry. So, what we're talking about here really is just that suspension system at the back end. Has Specialized actually gone and made a better bike? Well, I've been out to Germany to try it out. We've only had a few rides on it, so we will be getting the bike back to the UK very, very soon to get a full test done. Before we chat to the bike's designer to learn about that rear end, let's catch up with me out on the German trails to find out how this thing actually rides. A quick first ride update. We've been out on these trails now for a few kilometers and this bike seems to ride kind of the smaller shocks that you find on gravel really, really nicely. Um, it's weird in a way. The place that you notice it most is uphill pedaling or pedaling over um, some shocks. So it kind of keeps the rear wheel a bit more in control, stops you bouncing around so much. We've had a mix of uh, surfaces today. We've had some relatively large uh, stones and rocks um, in kind of foresty areas uh, with roots and everything. And then we've also had um, kind of chunky gravel. I don't think the rear end, unless you maybe soften it off properly, is having too much of an effect um, over the kind of bigger, you know, really, really large um, bumps, just because you're still getting kind of, not buckarooed, but you're still moving about. And I think that's what will throw you more off your pedaling stroke than anything else. But where it is good is on the really fast stuff. We've hit a few flowing descents um, and it really just helps to calm the whole bike down. Um, so we've been taking, you know, corners at, 50 kilometers per hour, which um, for me as a roadie going on to the off-road stuff on new tires that I don't know, that's quite impressive. One of the primary concerns with um, a full sus gravel bike will probably be kind of, will it be wallowy to borrow a mountain bike term? And I've tried to test this out as best I can. I don't think we're going to be able to on one ride or even two rides, we'll have to get it back for proper testing. But I can say that I have thrown it into a few sprints. Um, it seems really reactive on the power, um, but I would like to get it onto the road in a bit uh, when we hit the tarmac again and give it a few sprints there. And here comes the rain. Great. Yeah, it appears that I've made the right clothing choice with this jacket. Very much so. Well, what Specialized is saying they're doing is allowing you to just kind of sit down in the saddle and ride stuff that you used to stand up for. Um, and to an extent, they've kind of nailed it. Um, I wouldn't say that, it, that it's in any way like a mountain bike in terms of compliance at the rear end. You, you still feel the big hits, but realistically, you know, this does a fabulous job at smoothing out you know, those, those medium hits that are gonna tire you out throughout the day. One of the main problems is that I haven't got the root on this Garmin. So um, it keep off or get dropped or get locked. I can't see. Apart from that, uh-oh. Uh. -oh. uh. Should we go Bear Grylls and see if we can follow the trails? I feel like, are these bike tracks? Who knows? 
the rear shock is tunable on the fly. Well, you can adjust it on the fly. There are three settings. So you've got the softest, which to be honest, you kind of just put it in that and leave it. You've got a medium and then you've got a kind of hard, which you know, doesn't allow the seat purse to move pretty much at all. Personally, I have found that if I'm just riding for riding's sake, then the softest setting is nice. You don't really feel the back end squishing around too much um, under yourself, which is nice because that means that it isn't changing the way that the pedaling feels. But then if you want to absolutely hammer it up some kind of technical climb, I found the hardest setting to be the best. I've got pretty much the base model, which is rival access. Um, and it's got the mountain bike gears on. So there's been plenty of gears for everything that we've done uh, so far. One thing to note, and I don't want to get all nationalistic about this, but the German thing about doing your roads really well, well, that stands up. And then the Germans seem to apply the same thing to their gravel. These are all beautifully maintained in the uh, Black Forest. So if you're looking for a gravel holiday, it's a good place. In terms of brakes, this thing has 160 millimeters front and rear. Personally, I'm not a massive fan of a 160 on the rear because I tend to lock it up a lot. Um, and that's just bad for your tires. It's not too bad on a bike that I'm not paying for, but if it was my own bike, I might fit a 140 mil rear disc uh, just because I'm not that heavy. And while I was out riding in the rain, I got to catch up with Ian Boswell. Yep, that's him off of Team Sky back in the day. He's now a very good gravel racer, though he does say that he does the events just for fun. Sorry for the audio, by the way, it was really rainy, so we sound like we're underwater. And we were underwater. Ian, we're out in the rain, first of all. Yeah. Do you love these conditions? No, not a big rain rider. <laughs> yeah, I will do it, but not my... Home, I would stay for a race like Unbound or uh, one of the other big kind of American ones, would you be taking this or the Crux? I'd say for most of the big American ones, I'd be taking this. Okay, so yeah, there's a few events in Vermont that are like very smooth gravel, a lot of climbing. I would run maybe the Crux, but yeah. in a lot of these longer events, you know, there's also a fatigue attack factor of. Just the, you know, the course wearing on you, not just the, the distance, but the actual surface, you know, coming at you through the bike. Yeah. Is there any way to, like, mitigate that fatigue and, you know, the positive at the end of the race? Well, I think we're about to descend, so I best put this camera away. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get the thing that most people often ask about first, uh, the tire clearance. It remains the same at 47 millimeters on a 700C or 2.1 inches on a 650B. So no changes there. The fun stuff comes at the back of the bike. So back to me in Germany where I got the juicy details from Chris Deluzio. That's the guy that designed the bike. This project started in 2017 or 18 okay. when we had some a lot of maybe the spike is, doesn't feel balanced anymore because the front was outshining the rear. Mm. When we look at gravel bikes specifically and we wanted to get the whole bike suspended, we tried all the typical mountain bike rear suspension systems mm -hmm. and didn't find any love in those. We tried them all and the feedback was this bike would be great if it had flat bars. So okay. it's kind of like, okay, we're, we're missing the point here. And we understood that suspension seat posts that have the action at the top, they have a lot of positive things, but a lot of drawbacks too. They, most of them are, don't have a damping, right? So they compress and then rebound. Um, they have high weight. Um, they're not very good to look at and they're mostly an add-on. So now you've got the shock in the top tube. Right. And then the, the post is doing the work, which yep. you can see working in action yes. as well. So that system, it's tunable, it's hydraulic uh, damped. What else is going on there? I can't understate how much of a project just the frame post is. And then you <laughs> yeah. take the damper, Yeah, huge project. You saw how 
seemingly complicated but simple mm. it is. Um, I mean, it's such how a, much work it's it does. Such a tiny part as yes. well. You think, it's and that's like, why it's so hard to do. Mm. It'd be easy to do if you had all the space in the world, but we yeah. need to package this in a yeah. road system. Yeah. So another practical consideration is that these bikes are going to go to a lot of different riders. That's a lot of different weights. How are you kind of building in the ability to cater for someone like me who's 62 kg, but yeah. also someone that's over 100 kg? Yeah, so we do that with nine different frame posts. Okay. Um, and those, they all, all these frame posts have two different stiffnesses as well. So mm. you can do the math. Nine times two is a lot, yeah, it's and then, many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so each frame post you have uh, a stiff setting and a soft setting, mm. and each bike comes with two frame posts, mm. and they overlap. So there is you have a stiff one, a stiff position, a soft position, and then the next post has a stiff position, soft mm. position, and they overlap. Okay. So the, you have a very fine adjustment between them, and the ones that come with each frame size is will fit the majority of people that will buy that size. And then okay. if you're outside of that range, you just, the dealer will have yeah. them and you just swap them out. It's very and, easy. And these are user changeable parts? Yes. Okay, yep. lovely. Mm -hmm. One bolt under the tendon and you're good to go. But if you wanna just change from one setting on your frame post to the other, it's just loosen one bolt, turn your saddle 90 degrees, tighten the bolt, straighten your saddle and go. Hopefully that cleared it up for you a bit. Um, off camera, Chris actually told me that despite possibly looking like a weak point, the system is very strong and it's actually overbuilt to help with, you know, when you crash. And if you're wondering why Specialized didn't hide the tech away behind a fairing, Chris told me that one of those would be very difficult to make and also quite heavy. And the system is already adding 400 grams to the frame. More practical things now, and the bike comes with some, but maybe not all of the mounting points that you'd expect on a kind of gravel adventure bike. Uh, you get mounts on the fork legs, there's a bag mount on the top uh, side of the top tube, and there's a bolt on mudguard if you want one. But at the back, there are no mounts for bags, etc., as you're limited by the movement in the frame. It's not a massive issue, I'd say. You can probably still get a bike loaded up in a similar way to the old bike. When it comes to the geometry, there's not actually much change here. The bottom bracket has been dropped by five millimeters, but otherwise there isn't much new here. So what's the actual verdict? Well, the bike is heavier than the old model, but the Crux does lightweight gravel now, so that isn't really the focus. It's whether this bike is more capable or more comfortable than the old model. I would say that the rear end, which is pretty much all that the new bike boils down to, is, over certain terrain, a genuine comfort improvement. What we rode in Germany is a little bit limited in variety, so I think that it's only fair that we get the bike back to Suvi or Aaron on off-road CC so that he can put it through its paces on the stuff that they know. Personally, however, I think that this is gonna be a bit of a Marmite bike. You'll either think that the rear end is super comfortable or you'll think that it moves around too much. Me, I kind of sat in the middle. I like the comfort gain. It helps a little bit with pedaling efficiency over rough ground and descending it is actually really nice on the bike because it is so calm. Steep climbs saw me closing off the shock, but that is a small thing. If you want comfort from a gravel bike, then you could do a lot worse than the Diverge STR. Now, I've been talking about the Crux a lot. We also took a look at that bike, so go and check out my review of that. That should be popping up on your screen right now. Remember to like and subscribe before you go and check back for the full review when we have it.